Hello my painting friends. I hope everything is well for you. And today we're going to start a new painting. And I am on a 12 by 16 canvas. And I'm going to show you how to do a different background than we did before. Now I have a Donna Dewberry sponge. You can get these on Donna Dewberry's website, onestroke.com, and they make really fast backgrounds and real smooth backgrounds. So for the center part here, I have used just regular white. And for, like here's white. For the next color, I have used Lavender. It's a folk art. For this color over here, I have used Violet Pansy, which is this color right here. And for the dark, I have used Deoxine Purple with some of your Violet Pansy and white was on the sponge too. So you have your highlight color here, this is your light, your medium, and then it's a little darker here. So I have my palette here and I have some of my colors out here for the, the complete painting except for doing leaves and stuff. But I'm not interested in all these colors so I'm just going to show you what colors I'm going to use for the background. What I want to do is I want to put light color here, which would be white. I want a medium tone over here mixed with white. And then I want just a light tone over here. And on the bottom, I want a darker tone. Okay, so that's the plan. So I start with the lightest color first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my sponge in and I'm going to pull it out. See? Just like that. Just pull it out. And then I'm going to start blending in the top area. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to hold on to this canvas. I'm not pressing down. I'm just gliding it along this canvas. I just want some white on here. Right in the top here. Okay, now go into a medium color. Leave your color on your sponge of the white. Now the medium color would be this color right here. Then this one would be a light color. So let's go into the medium color. There you go, just on the end of the sponge. Now medium color I'm going to put over here. Let's go into a little deeper tone. I'm going to choose this one right here. I didn't clean this sponge, I just went right into it. Set that aside. Now let's go over here. Let's go into a little deeper color. Now once I go into the dark, I can't be going back up into the other colors. So I picked up a little more white and I'm not pushing very hard at all. Just so I can get a little more light in here because of the way the poppies, so I'm going to have the poppies laying. So it looks kind of like a little table back here, maybe. And that kind of disappears up in here. So now we're back for the pattern. And I'm going to leave this set for a um, few seconds here. 
For the pattern, you're going to need to screen shoot this so that you have it and then you can crop it and then you could go ahead and print it out on your printer. And you can adjust the size if your printer allows you to do that. Make them smaller, you can make them bigger depending on what canvas size that you're doing. So just go ahead and lay out your pattern like I have here. Now let's see. I can see from in my camera that I need to darken this one up. So let me re-outline. All you're going to be doing is outlining the outside of your pattern here. You're not going to be doing any of this inside here. Okay? Just do your outside part. Just the, the outside part because we're doing these poppies different than what we did our roses in the last session. So you just need the outside of the pattern right now. Now uh, you'll place this larger one here. You'll place this one at the top. You'll place this one, which is this one right here. You'll place this one facing kind of down into this corner. The big one is above the center. Right in there. You are probably let's see about three inches two and a half three inches uh, from the top up there this one is placed in this direction here this one is going pretty much in this corner in this corner over here so now I want to talk to you about using acrylic extenders and what that means is I want to increase my drying time on my acrylics because I want to paint wet and wet. So in order to do that, we wouldn't want to use floating medium, which is what we use uh, mostly for when we're just using our acrylics and we want it to flow a lot better. We use the floating medium. But the floating medium does not extend your drying time on acrylics. So we have to use another product. One of the products you can use is the Folk Art Blending Gel. And a lot of us do have that blending gel. This blending gel, it doesn't stay as wet as this next product. This here is what I like is a Winsor Newton slow drying medium and it's also a gel. It gives you about seven minutes longer before it starts setting up. So I like to use the slow dry medium. And I put the slow dries on the canvas first and then put the paint on top of that, which is these two right here. This is the blending gel. This would be the slow dry. I like these two methods better here. So I like putting any type of blending gel or slow dry medium directly onto the dry canvas first and then putting the paint on the canvas and working the colors in and then doing the overstroke. All right, everyone, you're going to need two three quarter inch brushes, just like we used for the other rose painting that we did. One of them is to apply your paint and the other one is to do your overstroking with your white. Okay, so I'm gonna set one of them aside right now. And the color I'm gonna use for the top petal here is lavender. Okay, and then for my next color, the dark in there, 
we will use like the violet pansy okay now the next thing you you need is your slow dry medium or blending gel I put mine in a little cup like this got it out of the kitchen there and used my brush in fact I used a brush an older brush I had this is an old glazing brush and I love this thing I use it for uh, if I want to do scrubbing with it or something like that it isn't going to hurt it um, and so I use this to put my gel on on your canvas that's what you want to do is put your spread your gel out and you want to go a good half inch away from your pattern on this gel now what I also added on mine was some of this it's called a flow improver from Winsor Newton and the slow dry is a gel and sometimes it's fairly thick so I got this in order to just thin it down a little bit uh, you want a little under half as whatever you have in there and you just squirt that um, flow gel um, I need some more of it because I did use it and you just put it's real runny so you just put some, enough to cover the bottom there and then go ahead and dip your brush in it just dip your brush in it like that and then pick up some of your gel and work some of the gel in with the flow and what it does is it let your gel flow really easy otherwise it you're going to be scrubbing it now I put on enough of this medium to where when I I have a light sitting over here in this corner and when I tilt my head down I can see that it's really shiny and that's that's what I want to see is that it's shiny that means that it's wet and then I just set this aside and make sure you put your brush that you had the gel on put that in water so it doesn't dry out on you now I still have some of that gel in my brush that I'm gonna use to put on my background so I'm I'm just gonna wipe that a little bit on a paper towel so that I don't have a whole lot there's still some in there but it's not uh, globby or anything like that and I am going to use this lavender color which is the lightest color that I have on my palette this is the light a medium a dark would be for this flower here this is the darkest would be deoxine purple so I'm gonna pick a little bit of this up on my brush and we're gonna see if this is gonna be dark enough for us so now what I want to do is cover this petal uh, flower poppy and I want to keep my strokes irregular on the outside edge see how ruffled those are and that's that's the way I want it I don't want them I don't want a circle on here I don't want a cotton ball on here because when you come back over to do your petals you're gonna paint them rounded you're not gonna paint them in a circle like that all right so there's the light color now I also want to put in some darks and those darks are gonna be let me show you on this one well let me show you on the pattern here might be easier on the pattern here On the big one here see how we have the center of the flower in here 
Well, we want to create dark right in the center area. We also have a little bowl area under here that we want to create dark in. So what I do is I just pick up my color. So let's grab our palette here. I haven't cleaned my brush. I'm still in this color here. I'm going to go to this color. So I'm going to pull out some paint. Remember, we're doing this while it's wet. The center part is here, so I'm going to touch and pull up. Now we have a cup that is right under here. This would be the front part. And I'm going to put some of this darker color down here on these petals. Remember how we double loaded on the roses? Well, this is kind of creating that same thing. See, we're going to have our front petals here. This will be the cup of the flower. And I want this dark here, and this will be really, really light. Okay, now we're going to end up with more, more petals so that we're going to have, oh, probably three right here. If we sketch in our petals, you have a three back petals, and these are going to be your front petals, right? Okay. One, two, three, there's your five petals right there. But we've added, I'm going to wipe on the paper towel there, but we've went ahead and added our darks here, right behind these petals here. Now it's not going to do any good to mess with it because it's going to pull it up. Okay, so let's get that much done on, on the poppy there. Let's go into our white, pull your paint out, load both sides. Pull it out like that. I'm going to dab in a little bit of medium over here because I don't think I put it in my brush. So we're going to dab in the medium. Okay, I'm going to put this up here. Put my palette up here so I can reach it. Here we go. Okay, so let's start out here and lay in some petals. This is kind of a free form. So I see a high point here. So we're going to touch it and pull in straight down the first stroke. And we're going to do two. Now that's pulling with me. Hang on. I don't want it to pull. So touch straight down. If our petal is in a fan shape like that, then you pull down on the first stroke and you go a 45 degree angle on the next one. Two. See how it's tipping the edge of that when I go into the purple. Okay. Now this next petal, I'm going to come out here like this. Straight down on the first one, and then two on each side. Okay. Now if it gets too transparent and you start seeing your lines or something, you can pick up a little bit of the purple. Okay. Let's go into some white again. Let's sketch out another little petal like that. Now I'm going slower than what I would so that you can see it easier. But that's what you're going to do. You're going to sketch out a little petal 
from one around. I'm going to have to go ahead and complete this or it's going to dry up on, on me. I have about a 15 minute window here to get these petals on. Lightly pick up some of this blue color here. Now the blue color is it's a Liquitex light blue violet. It's a gorgeous color. I love it to tip these uh, petals in on the outside edge here. Look at how pretty that color is. <clears throat> Just got to make sure that um, it's still wet out there on that edge before you do it. Otherwise you would have to let it completely dry and then come back. So much that blue adds to it. I just love this blue. It just adds so much. So I can get into my white. Now my white has a few colors in it, which is fine. I have a little bit of blue in it. I have a little bit of that other color. So I'm gonna, just going to pull my white out like that. your brush on both sides. Again, here I am in the center petal. We want to do that last. So I'm going to do this one or that one. Touch, pull in. Touch and pull in. Touch, pull in. Okay, that would be one of them. Go in the center of this one. Touch, pull. Touch, pull. Touch, pull. Now for these here, you could do a little side stroke like that. <clears throat> My throat is getting dry. I'm talking. Okay, so here's the center one. So touch, pull straight down. Touch, pull down. This one's going to overlap like that. Touch, pull down. Touch, pull down. We're going to overlap that one. It's starting to tack up on me a little bit, so I need to get these painted right here. Okay. This one's behind, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the side one. Connect the side one to your front pedal. So here, connect it. See that little C stroke right there? Let's connect this one. Start here and connect it right to the center. Okay, now we can go ahead and connect these up here. Touch, pull. That would be one side. Touch, pull. Here's your other side. Okay, pull it right there into the front. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush on a paper towel so that it's just taking the excess off the outside. Okay, we're going to come back in. I'm going to load with a, this color right here. That one is not the lavender. It is the light. I think it's light lavender. What is that one? No. Just lavender. Okay. Make sure I give you the right color. I want to touch some of these petals so I have a little lavender. Now, let's see, do I want that more white? This one, I lost it. There we go. Okay, now the only other thing I want to do is maybe tip it in a little bit of the blue. That blue is just so pretty. Tip it on the edge there. Tip this one on the edge. Yes, now that shows up. Now I've lost these two petals right here. Might want those in a little bit of blue. There we go. And this one over here. I lost that one too. Alright. Now that one, 
uh, is still wet. I'm looking at it, but it is starting to dry up. Now remember, we only have about 15 minutes to get this poppy done wet and wet. Ah, that's a little, little thing came off my brush or my paint or something. <laughs> Come on. Okay, now go back lightly over that stroke. Okay, what is this? Okay. All right, so let's restroke that. Ooh, look at that pretty one. That way it looks like it's connected to that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paint this poppy here in the Violet Pansy. I've already coated it with my extender or slow dry medium. So we are going to apply our base coat. I have the base outline. And I'm pulling in and out. Now we'll have to go over this petal some, or I'll pull the purple over that. I'll probably pull the white over that. Okay, now we want to know which way this petal is facing. So it's going towards that corner. I am going to make a smile. That's the bowl. I'm gonna come around. Looks like lips here in the front. And I am gonna sketch in one, two, three petals here. Okay, so I can come out just a little further there. These can be a little bit lighter even. All right, let's put the darks in. Deoxine purple. Remember, we're going to have to paint a little fast here. Okay, let's get a little bit of dark under here. Doesn't matter if it's put in sloppy. You're going to go for it anyway. There's those petals here. All right. Wipe that brush down. Okay, that's my base brush now. Let's go ahead and pick up our other brush. And for that, I'm going to dip into my medium and I'm going to work it on my palette into my brush. Flattening my brush out, working it in there. Okay. And then I'm going to go into the white and we're going to pull that out. Load both sides, pull it out. Now I just barely dipped my brush in a little bit of corner of it, this back corner in a little water. Make that pull that out a little better so it's nice and thin. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna pick my petals out. I'm not gonna sketch them in for you this time because it will take too much time to do that. Okay, I'm just going to keep dipping into the white. Working it into the brush. Okay. It feels dry right there. I must be going out past. Yeah, see there's no medium out there. I can tell whenever I don't have any medium out here because when I pull in, 
those strokes will be real dry. Now again, if I want those transparent, I need to pull those petals out a little further. If I want this to be a little more transparent, come out a little further. And then I'm wiping my brush on a paper towel. Pull out a little further to get that transparency. See, your paint doesn't want, you don't want thick paint right in here. You want thin, thin down paint. Let's go here, here. Those are okay there. This one is a back petal. That one's back. I'm going to make that a little more transparent right in here. Okay. Now, here's our petals here. One, two, these connect to right there on the corner. All right. Load up with a little more white. I want this a thinner color. I'm going to dip just the corner in a little water and work it into my white here. Do one of these two here. So touch, pull, touch, pull touch, pull, go back into white, touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull, I'll give you a little side one right there. Now we're going to come into the center, straight down, touch, pull, these are going to overlap. The side ones. Okay, touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. This one, going to come into your center. There we go. Let's redo that one. That one's kind of straight. I like it to look a little lacier. All right, on our side petals here, let's see if I can finish doing this one. There, that looks like one comes in there. This one is a little long, but I'm going to try to come in here a little bit, right under that. Now, what about this one? Let me get a little white here. I'm going to go back over this one we did. There we go. Because I want it to look like um, this one is on top of that. Now, I didn't get the right kind of stroke I wanted on that. So touch, pull down. Okay, I'm going to go into a little glue here. We're going to touch some of that with blue. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it looks like it's over on its own there. Okay, more white. We're doing the front petal here. The two front petals. This one's under that one. Touch, pull. I want to connect these two. A little side one there. If I have a small space, I use the back corner. Let's see, there's the back corner. I just use the back corner. I sit on it and pull. There we go. Remember how um, Donna uses her brush a lot doing the back corners? And that's what I'm doing, you know, when she does her little flip flop stroke. Well, I'm kind of you using that to do a front petal here. That one's going in front. Okay. This one connects to that one there. 
This one connects to that one right there. Okay. All right, here we are on our third poppy. It has been base coated with the slow dry. And I have used a pink color here. This is a Liquitex Medium Magenta. And if you don't have those colors, you could just use regular magenta on your Focox color and add a little white to it so it lightens it up just a little bit. So I took the magenta and some of this light blue, which is Liquitex Light Blue Violet, Mix those two together and it comes up kind of a violet color. And I let some of those pinks come through. I also sketched in my little lips on the front here. See the little lips right there? Then these petals here, these come in this way. Okay, so this one's a bud that's just opening as opposed to these are a little bit more open. Okay, put your brush in your water. Now let's go ahead and pick up your other brush. And this one should be with the white. So I'm gonna go over here with some white. It's kind of like a light lavender actually, because <laughs> I've been working in it. I want this to be fairly loose, so I'm dipping just the back corner of that brush in a little water and mixing it into the little pile here. It's nice and loose, not runny, loose, in my brush. Now, let's go ahead. I'm going to do these down here. These, I want these transparent. how pretty those colors are coming out. Let's see, let's do this one over here. Let me go out a little further on that so we get some purple edges. Okay, now this one in the middle. Okay, need to dress my brush a little bit. I'm going to dip in the back corner in a little water. Come up here, work it in. Come up here, do the bottom one. Touch, pull straight in. Touch, pull in. Sit on that brush a little bit. There we go. I think I like that one over that. It's already on there. Yeah. Okay, and then that one's over that one. I can see my... Um, pattern. So we want to touch this. Come back over just a little bit more so the color's a little darker. Okay. I can still see a little bit of that under there, but we'll take care of that later. All right. Come up here to the back petals. Touch. Pull. Okay. Dress my brush again. Touch. Pull. Side stroke into there. A little side stroke here. See how short that petal is? Real short, because these are going to come up higher. This one's over, so touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. This one, we're going to connect it, so we're going to do a little swoopy. Okay, now I'm going to touch that one a little shorter. Okay, now let's feather that up. Make sure we have a bowl on that. There we go. I just want to make sure you kind of see a roundness right here. Okay. You can blend down into this a little bit more. Once it starts setting up, you can't do that because it will start to pull up with you. 
okay so you just have to kind of try it out now I'm gonna wipe the brush on a paper towel I'm gonna come into blue again a little bit of blue here I don't want it real thick so I'm gonna dip the back corner in a little water come up here and mix it in and we want to tip some of these edges in blue Real faint, real faint color of blue. And you get that by using a thin paint, a thinner paint. Here we go. Okay. Just like that. Now I saw something up here. Where did I see that? I was going to add another petal up here. I'm going to go over here to some white. I don't see this one very well. There, that brought it out a little more. There we go. Oh, I know. Right here. If you didn't want that long, you could use um, a stroke and come across here and make another petal right on top of that. Also, anywhere you wanted to, like right here, I can see my line. Now, let's see, what if I just tape? Oh, not dark enough. Just take a little edge. Right there, it looks like another petal. Okay, I see a little bit right here, a little bit of my line pattern. Yeah. Let's just make it to where it looks like. There's another short little petal right there. Let's do it here too, so it looks kind of kind of the same too. There, so now now we have more petals than what we had before. Okay, see that's how you can add other layer of petals. If it looks like the petal's way too big and you want to cut it off, uh, some of these other petals, uh, if they get too uh, long of a petal, you can always do another petal in, in and over it. But don't forget to do it while it's wet. Okay, that looks pretty good on camera. So I'm going to leave that one. And if you want, but I really love this style of painting because it looks so light and airy. Fluffy little petals. And, and then when you add all your leaves and foliage and everything else combined, they just look so soft. That's what I like about it. Okay, so get your petals done, and we will come back and we will add all of our foliage, and we'll be doing another little flower along with this too. So I'll see you later. So once we have our poppies done, what we want to do next is to put in our centers here, here, and I have some uh, stamens here on this one here. And we would use our Deoxine Purple. And we would use our 2 inch liner brush. And we would get it inky on our palette. And then we would go ahead and pull out our little hair like stamens going in all directions. Okay, get those on and for the center part here I just dabbed a little bit of the deoxine purple Let's also put in our stems like you show here again using your two inch liner 
Now for that, I used I used this color right here, which is the lavender. And again, wet it, inky, and draw in some stems. I started right back here in between these two flowers, came up, spin them off like that, just different directions. This carries your eye down this way carries your eye to the corner and then this will carry it this way another indention is here so come up to this corner up to that one there and back down and then add a few little branches onto that once i have that done i picked up a filbert brush this is a number eight you can also use a 10 Whichever one's comfortable and depends on what size canvas you're using. And what I did there was I picked up a little bit of the Violet Pansy mixed with a little bit of this green here, which is a Folk Art Green Sea. And I also used some of this fresh cut grass. So I have these two colors here. You can see them. One's a real, real light and one's a little bit deeper color. If you don't have those, just pick whatever you have. And I have them right here. And what I did was mix some floating medium in with my brush. I want it transparent again. Remember, we're just doing these little flip-floppy strokes. See all that light filler in there? Just like we did on the roses. If you're not for sure, go back to my previous video on the roses on foliage. And flip-flop some color. In the colors I showed you, here's some over here. So once you get that in, then I needed a darker foliage, which would be the Violet Pansy and maybe some of the Lavender mixed with these two greens. And I created the darker foliages here, which is closest to the flowers. And then I needed some dark foliage down in here under these flowers because we're going to be putting some flowers, bigger flowers, not bigger than the poppies, but not real tiny flowers down here. And I need a dark base down here. Again, this is just flip-flop strokes. Don't really care what it looks like. It's just an undercoating or a base coat. When I got down here near the table part, I picked up floating medium while it was wet still here. And I went back and forth like this so that my table is going horizontally. And then I carried that color down a little bit up under the poppies here, over here, under here, and I made it real soft in color. All of this down here will have leaves and flowers, and you, you won't even see that. But I needed the dark base, so go ahead and get that put in. Okay, next I want us to add our little blade grasses to our stems that we just put on. Again, I'm using the same colors. Here's these two greens. And when I want to change it up with a little bit of lavenders in there, I will use the light lavender and I think this one is straight lavender. Also, I'm using an 8 filbert and I am using some floating medium because I want these to really flow nice right off the branch here. So remember our stroke is chisel, flatten, and chisel. And when you want to add some different color, just pick up a little bit on your filbert like that. Come back up, start on the stem, chisel, flat chisel. If it doesn't show up, then you 
uh, need a little bit deeper color. So I just picked up a little bit of the, the green <clears throat> on that. Make sure you have a QT. If you get a fat line on it, you can just take that QT and wipe it right on down while it's wet. Okay, so variate your colors. Light, medium, you could use some lavender for the dark. You could even add a little bit of lighter color to this if you wanted to. Here's another one down here. Just gracefully touch these. Just pull them right on down. If it doesn't show up, you either have to darken it or lighten it. So I'm going to darken this with some of the green. Okay, see how that pulled that right in the front? In fact, I think I'm going to make this mostly a green one. Pull that right in the front. See how that pulled that right in the front? Lavender. We could add some of this lavender with our petals. This might be too lavendery. I'm just going to try it and see. Oh, that's all right. Okay, remember when it dries, you just go right back over it if you don't like the color of some of these. You see how graceful those strokes are? I just think it adds um, a lot of flowing lines to this. Now up here, uh, yeah, you can see that. I might add a little bit of that lavender up here. So go ahead and get these in, and I can just take my brush. If I want a little more green tones down here, Flip flop some of these green tones right in here. We're going to be covering this up anyway. But and you could do the same thing right here, especially in the deep pockets. Sometimes I do this and I just clean off my brush basically with some of the green color. See how you can just clean it off like that and flip flop it around then that way you have some other colors going in your base down here all right get those put in let these dry and we'll come back and do our larger one stroke leaves so let's go ahead and sketch in our leaves using our white school chalk And you can screen shoot this if you would like, just so you have the placement. And you can see that I have one here, here, there, there, there. This one down on the bottom is going to be a turn petal because it's going to be laying on the table. And then I added three on the bottom couple in the center one two and three in the back here you'll notice a lot of them overlap the petals and then I have two right here and make sure you put your center stem in that way you will know where you're going whenever we do the one stroke because we're going to be coming up one side here to a point and swing back down I just call it a up and back leaf. That's what we're going to be doing. Now we've added some leaves in here and I have done all but a couple of them up here so I could show you how to do them. And the colors I used for that is the same greens we used prior plus I've added another green and you can use a sap green or another color I really like is Liquitex Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. That's a pretty color. And I chose that one because it had it's more of a blue green and means we're working with uh, violet colors. I thought it'd be uh, pretty. It'd kind of go with the same tones that we're doing. So I have a 16 inch brush and double loaded with the green 
And over here on this side here, I picked up a little white. I was picking up this uh, C, what is it, green C, but I wanted it lighter, so I added a little white up here, put a little white in it, and that made it a little bit lighter, okay? So I'll stick that up there. Now let's go ahead and do this leaf up here. Whenever you're doing uh, your leaves, like wherever the light is, light's kind of in the middle here, I want this side of the leaf to be a lighter color and then it'd be the top on that. So when I'm uh, doing this one, I want this leaf to be the lightest on the left. So we're going to come up. We're going to come up, go to a point, and you can ruffle up to your point. Keep it on a chisel and swing back down and flatten out that brush as you come back down. Now I was worried about getting in my flower. Just a minute here. Up, touch, come down. Now go ahead and put your little stem in. Okay, dress that brush into a chisel again. And then I just did a few little leaf vines on it. That's the word I was looking for. A few little vines on it. Okay, now let's do the other one. I'm going to add a little bit more floating medium on this because it seems to be uh, pulling on that dry canvas. So dip in a little floating medium and then go back and forth. Don't press as hard. Okay, should be nice and flowing for me. I'm going to turn my canvas a little bit. I'm going to have the light on the outside. Touch up to a point, stand up, come back down. Okay, you may have to go back just on that edge there. Now I had to go down because my canvas was dry. Okay, so you got that one. Now come back with your vine like that and then come back with some little chisel strokes for your little veins in your leaves. Okay, so that is the different placements of your leaves. And what we will do next is go ahead and put in these flowers right down here. We're gonna have some pretty white flowers down there. All right, see you in a few. Now I wanna show you how to put in these little, they look almost like a little daffodil, not a daffodil, but a, oh, marigold. In, in yellow or something. I don't know. Make up any name of the flower that you want to. Uh, that's just how I wanted to do them. So I've started out with some daffodil yellow and white and I have an angle brush and the white is on the toe and the yellow is on the back edge. And I'm going to put my flower, I'm going to have three of them here, and then I've added some little pods here coming off. So let me go in real close here. So let me zoom in a little bit here for you. So you can see that a little better. So it's actually done in layers. And what I do is I, I just put a little... V right here and I come up and I do little loops little loops like that you can do little pity pats you can do little loops just little petals we're going to go around each time there to there come up Sit on the brush a little bit. Now we're going to do more than one 
grow with these, so not real concerned. I'm just pretty much concerned with the outside edge. Not so much the inside because we're going to have other petals on it. Now the next little stroke here, I'm mostly working off of the tip of the brush to do these other little petals that are going to come around like this. And it's okay if you have little edges on, on those petals. You don't have to have them real smooth. It's better if you don't because they take longer to dry and if you're not finished with your painting. And then I take the back corner. I'm just adding some yellow to that back corner. So what I would do is once this is dry, I would come back with the angle brush and I would float a little bit more white on those inside petals there. Now I'm probably going to fill these in inside here with some little leaf leaves in here. Kind of like I like these leaves that I did right here. See those? Those are in just green and a real light green, dark green, light green. You're just doing a real fast, basic one stroke leaf is all you're doing. See, and I have a bunch of these touch, flip, touch, flip. And if you do it fast enough, you get them to where they are just really, really faint and tiny and they make their own little little stroke and then you put a little stem on them well that's the same thing that i'm gonna do down in this area here in order to fill in these areas back up a little bit so in order to fill in these little areas see these little gaps right here I've got a few of them started here, these little bitty twist, twisty leaves. I just touch the brush, flip, touch, flip, touch, flip. They're really fast to put in, and you get a different look. Each time you do a stroke, you can see how much different they look. And then take the front edge of your brush and put a little stem on there. And you've got some filler in there. Now for the center part on this, I would use, I think I'm going to use like um, some of the Dioxine Purple in there. I think that would be pretty. Put a little Dioxine Purple center. it's dry I can go ahead and add another color like some little seeds on the top if I want I'll think about what I want to do and I'll show you the completed painting whenever I get it all done and I'll point out if I've added some other neat little things in there I have to look at my painting to see see what else I want I have to look at it and See where I want to add more lights, where do I want to add more darks, and where do I want to shadow underneath some areas. Let's back up again here. There we go. Okay, so I'll point out some of these while I'm here, because this is pretty much finished other than a few little finishing touches. I'll add some of those little flip-flop green leaves in the front and in some of these areas here. Uh, some of these leaves I have turned up and I've deepened some of the shadow. This one here deepened a little shadow. The shadow colors I use Dioxine Purple with a little bit of dark green. Here's another turn leaf over here. You can also put a little shadowing uh, around your leaves here where they connect to the flower. I also added a little bit of shading which is floating medium and the purple 
and deepen some of these around the petals. Remember, if there's a petal you can't see, to you know how we did the floating. I go into a little more detail in the rose painting when you go into the roses if you're not for sure what to do. Uh, here, this is a little floating in here to make that a little deeper. And this one's pretty deep on here. I didn't do a whole lot extra on this. Now when you look at your painting, also if I redid some of these over here, I had a little blue and I actually added more of the green too because when I started looking at them I couldn't see it uh, because you're going to be looking at this from across across the room you want to get back about you know three or four feet and I actually just go sit in my chair and put it up on an easel and look at it and come back and look at it and maybe let it set for a couple of days and see if there's anything I want to change also we need to put the little dots on our little center petals and other than that I've re-highlighted a little bit on those turns to do that added a little blue in the leaves added a little blue in these leaves up here and once I highlight some of this white over here and put the centers in here those will be done also all right, I will come back whenever I have it completed and we'll show you what it looks like completed and you can screen shoot that and that will give you a good photo that you can paint off of. Okay, be back in a few. So what does everyone think? I want to thank you all for joining me on this poppy venture. Make sure that you Push the like button on the YouTube channel and you subscribe so you don't miss any of the paintings that I have coming up. Make sure you share if you have friends that paint. And if you have any questions, you can Facebook message me and I'll be glad to help you out or answer any of them that you might have. And thank you for joining me again. I'll see you next time. Bye.